though they are less in number, they are more in appetite. All congregations are not the same. It's not how many people are present that determines the flow of miracles in a place. It's how hungry those people are that controls the flow of miracles in a place. I was in Bible class with 10% of this crowd and we had 100% of glory because God doesn't go by a head count, he goes by a hunger count. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. If all the people in this room got hungry, it would put a demand on the gift that would saturate the place. And God doesn't care about numbers, he cares about appetite. To a house that wanted a lot of bread, he sent a lot of manna. To a house who had a poor appetite, he sent little manna. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? Or is this just your Sunday morning routine? I want to walk through this text and show you some curiosities. How could you leave 12 baskets full and seven baskets full is 19 baskets full of fish and bread and walk away from it. It just happened and you only got one loaf. My first problem with the disciples is they forgot to bring the bread. After Jesus has invested all of this into you, the Bible says the disciples had forgotten the bread. So the Lord told me to ask you, have you forgotten the bread? Night baskets of bread and all you got is one loaf? That is discouraging for any ministry, any minister to pour out on this level to a people who only keep that little and all you got to show for all that Jesus did in your life is one loaf of bread. There are a lot of church folk in this room right now that God has done so many miracles for that you got 19 loaves of bread. Don't let hell trick you into forgetting the bread that God has already done in your life. If I'm talking to you, give God a praise. Wait a minute, let's go deeper. They were with Jesus and they still forgot to bring with them what Jesus had done. They are in the presence of the Lord who is keeping an accounting of what he has invested in their life and he recounts the accounting in their presence of how much you should have left And you show up after been saved 20 years with one measly little McDonald's loaf of bread. As old as you are, as saved as you are, as gifted as you are, as many times as God raised you up and brought you out of trouble and brought you out of depression and brought you out of the hospital and brought you out of jail and brought you out of tragedy and brought you out of adversity, you mean you come here with one measly little decrepit loaf of bread? A 
That's the first problem I have with the text. We don't keep enough left. We forget once we get out of trouble to value what's left. While we're in trouble, we are praying with God feverishly and fervently for God to deliver. And then we leave the bread on the boat. And we show up with one pitiful looking sad loaf of bread. I'm embarrassed. How many times have I walked away from a 19 basket full situation with one measly loaf of bread. That's pitiful. That's sad. That you would have so little to show for 40 years of life. <laughs> that God protected you when you were in your mama's womb that God raised you in an undesirable situation and still brought you through it and raised you up and you came out by his grace and by his miracles. That God raised you up and gave you a job sometimes that you weren't even qualified for and put you in a position where you didn't even have experience and now you're sitting in here with your entitled self acting like you deserve to be where you are. I don't know whether I believe in giving. I don't know whether I believe in tithing. I, you wouldn't have nothing to tithe on if you were still getting wick and food stamps and government cheese and powdered eggs and powdered milk. And the only reason you are arrogant about your giving is because you left the bread on the boat. People who remember say, all of my help comes from the Lord. All my knees, everything I want comes from the Lord. Is there anybody in here that remembers the 19 basketfuls? This is how I tell him when I ask him for something. I ask him for things sometimes. And when I ask him for something, I also tell him, but if you don't do it, and if you don't give it, and if you don't send it, and if you change your mind, you've already done enough. You've been so good to me. You brought me from such a long way. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, because I got enough left. If you got something left, make some noise in this place. <laughs> Sit down, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper with you. Can I go deeper? Can I go deeper? Touch somebody and say something is about to happen in this place. Something is about to happen in this place. Something is about to happen in this place. If nothing else, I'm going to go back and get that bread off of my boat. I'm going to go back and remember and stir up the gifts that lie within me. If nothing else, I'm going to change my attitude and act like the blessed woman I am and the blessed man I am and the blessed preacher I am. I got too much stuff on the boat to show up at the party with one little measly loaf of bread. The devil is a liar. And Jesus speaks to them to beware of the leavening of the Pharisees. Beware of the effect of your friends, your associates, the people you talk to who seek to devalue me in your life. Jesus calls them leavening because who you hang with 
affects how you rise. Can I say that for the people in the back? Who you hang with affects how you rise. So Jesus called the Pharisees leavening and said, be careful because they will dilute or pollute you down to one loaf of bread. And then he does his accounting thing. He says, do you remember how you had 5,000? Yes, Lord. And I took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000. Then he said, how much did you have left? Oh, my God. God is concerned about not how many you fed. <laughs> how much do you have left? Now, this is important. I got four principles I'm gonna give you real quick and I'll be done. The first principle is the principle of multiplication. Jesus does the miracle to teach them that you don't have to have enough to work with for me to meet the need. <laughs> Yea, I say unto thee this day, in this house and amongst this people, I will take the little that you will sacrifice to me and when I touch it, I will multiply it. Do not be afraid of their faces and what they do not have. Do not be afraid of how they look at you. Stop counting what's in your bag. I am going to bring you into a season of multiplication. I will take what you have and you will be shocked at what I am able to do with you. You are not coming into addition. You are not coming into subtraction you are coming into multiplication. And all those that received that word gave him a crazy praise. I'm going in the principle of multiplication. It's happening in my life. It's happening on my job. It's happening in my finances. It's happening in my body. It's happening in my strength. It's happening in my social environment. I'm meeting people I thought I would never meet because God is taking me into the principle of multiplication. Press down, shake it together running over, supernatural. Who can receive this word? Who can receive this word? Jesus didn't do this miracle just to be doing it. 
He didn't do it because he likes to make lunch for grown people. Jesus did it so they would step into the principle of multiplication and understand not only are you enough, you are more than enough. If you turn it over to God, God is going to bring you into increase like you've never seen before. Who am I talking to? I'd like to know who I'm talking to.